Welcome to Case Back Watches. My name is Tim, and in this episode, I'd like to cover the topic Swiss or Germany. So, Swiss made or made in Germany. And this was a request of a viewer. He'd like to know my opinion or my, my favorites made, watches made in Germany or watches Swiss made. And so, I will debate this in this video. And by the way, I'm planning the next QA video. And so, if you have a question, then just put it in the comments under this video, okay? So that I can uh, choose 10 or 12 questions as usual and then I will answer them in one or two weeks. Okay, now to the topic. I will give you three pros and three cons for every country. But first let's ask what was the beginning in Switzerland and in Germany when it comes to watchmaking. And in Switzerland the beginning was 1770, around that date. And Switzerland back then was not state of the art when it came to watchmaking. They had strong competitors, especially in the United States and in France, but they had managed to pool some knowledge um, since the yeah, late Middle Ages, and we're speaking here about the Huguenots. The Huguenots were persecuted uh, because of their faith, and a lot of them went to Switzerland. And in Germany, the, the beginning was much later. It was 1845, 1845, and this was the year when the famous Adolf Lange founded or built his first factory in the city Glashütte. Okay, and now let's start with the pro and cons. And of course, I cannot mention here everything uh, with, which is worth mentioning, but I want to give you my three major pros and cons and the pros and cons I have um, own experience with. And so I don't have to speculate here all the time. And so let's begin with the first pro for Switzerland. And this is brand value. Brand value backed by something, really by something, earned over centuries, backed by quality over centuries, for high standards. It stands for very old companies, which is um, nice if you see it on an advertising, but it's more important because the signal is we will survive everything. If you buy a product from us, we will be there for your kids. And you can add, of course, the reputation of Switzerland in general. I mean, it's a nice, neutral, small country and in a way, um, how to put it, clean. I mean, of course, Switzerland has its um, dark spots in history like every country, but the reputation is relatively intact. And you will not find a good watch from Switzerland with a, let's say, red communist star on the dial. And so there is this neutrality in the products, which many people like. And I, I think this is really a pro. Next pro for Switzerland, the designs. Marvelous designs and more important, um, the number of icons design-wise. If you buy a high-tier Swiss watch, then the probability that you have a real icon on the wrist is very, very high. And if you compare, let's say, famous watches from Germany like the Max Bill series by Junghans with something like the Longines flagship, I mean, the name says it, the flagship, I think, for me personally, is way ahead design-wise than the Max Bill. By the way, a little wrist watch check here. I'm wearing since weeks. Hey, focus on the watch, not on the Tintin. Please. I'm wearing the Dubi and Schallbrand Diplomatic. Enjoy it a lot. Next pro for Switzerland, you can buy there a wide variety of quality watches from relatively affordable to super luxurious. And so basically everything is possible there. Everything is possible if you go Swiss. By the way, this would be a nice claim for them. In Swiss, in Swiss watchmaking, everything is possible. And that's exactly the truth. You can buy there your three-hand watch and you can buy a tourbillon if you like. And so everything's possible. And this is absolutely a pro, I think. Okay, and now let's go over the border. Let's go to Germany. Let's check the three pros for Germany. And first, as well, quality. They have a reputation for quality. And there's this cliche that Germans in general are obsessed with quality. And this is not 100% true, but to a certain extent, certainly, especially if you see this region between craft and industry. So small manufacturers, but with machinery, but also with people who can touch the products there. There you find uh, definitely a high tendency to, or the, the willing for, for absolute 100% quality, yes. The next plus might, might be a little strange, but it's a shadow from Switzerland. The shadow from Switzerland. Germany watchmaking and watchmaking was always in this shadow. And so they were under constant stress to prove that they are equal, that they can put out nice quality wristwatches. And if you see um, advertisings from Switzerland, from the big brands, then the, 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 they try to grab you with emotions, with family values with heritage pedigree all those 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 terms 
and if you compare then the, the, the ads from Germany, then they try to grab you by your emotions as well, but with numbers. They say then, this is not steel, this is U-boat steel, and this movement runs with those specifications. They try to convince you that they are equal with numbers and details and not only with emotions. And there you see it that they are under constant stress to prove we are equal, we can deliver something outstanding like the, like the guys from Switzerland. And of course for us as clients this is extremely good because we know a German manufacturer cannot get away with sloppy work. They have to deliver. They are not Switzerland, they are Germany and so they have to deliver something extra to convince us. And of course this is great for you and me as customers. Pro number three is the customer service in Germany which is um, on a good normal standard. You may ask now why is the normality good? Um, we will debate this when it goes to Switzerland, to the, to, the, to the negatives of Switzerland. But if you buy a watch from a German manufacturer, then you will see a good accessible website with a web shop, with an email address, with a telephone number. Somebody will answer your phone calls and something like that. And if something goes wrong, if there is repair in need for your watch and you send it in, you will get it back after, what is it, two weeks or something like that. So normality, normality. And in the watch world, this in my eyes is good. This is absolutely a plus. And part of this last pro here, this pro number three, is that the prices for services are relatively normal as well. And this is absolutely a positive, I think. Okay, but now it's getting funny. Now let's start with the cons. Let's begin with Switzerland. First con is the service mafia. I've mentioned this type of mafia here on the channel. And I think what many people don't realize, if you buy a very expensive Swiss, Swiss made timepiece, then um, they want more money from you. They want that you service the thing every five or every seven years, some brands every three years, small service they call it. And they will charge you um, over the top, absolutely over the top. I made this video and people sent me their service bills. It was, <laughs> it was ridiculous. And this without a real convincing reason. I mean, Oris presented now the, this, this movement which should last 10 years without everything. I think it comes with a 10 year warranty actually. And so this, this service market, this is really strange and this is absolutely a con. The next con as I see it when it comes to Switzerland are high watch prices and sometimes not really backed by real features but um, back to a high amount with brand value only. And this sometimes is yeah, a bit, bit crazy. If you have that three-hand watch, it's very basic. And it's, I mean, it's a good timepiece, but it's basic. There's nothing very, really special in it. And then you see the price and you think, wow, I could buy a good used car for that kind of money. And there you see that they just try to go to the limit. They, they just squeeze out every last buck from their customers. And this is, yeah, this is a con. It's a little bit like Apple, I think. And con number three is customer service. I mean, Swiss brands, they have their nice websites with nice images, but sometimes where's the online shop? In, not in existence. And um, but sometimes it's very hard to get in contact with them. And when you have a minor problem with your watch, then they send it to Switzerland and it will stay there months, months. I've experienced it several times with Rolex and Gégé Le Coultre. Gégé Le Coultre needed once, I think four months for a service. And then the watch came back, lost four minutes a day. Again, the service another four months, it was just crazy. Or the new seal for the Rolex date just for the crystal. Or I think I wanted a new crystal. For a watchmaker, I mean five minutes works. They sent it to Switzerland and it took six weeks to change the damn crystal. And this reluctance to make it comfortable for you as, as a client, this is not normal. Okay, and now the three cons for Germany. First, lower brand value. I mean, let's face it, of course there are regions in the world where German watches are very popular. But if you attend a party with an international crowd, then of course more people will find Swiss watches, Swiss watches more valuable than German watches. That's a fact and this is absolutely a con. And so if you're interested in the actual watch, but also in the, in the flair around it, then my suggestion here is go Swiss. The next con, um, people will absolutely hate me for this, but I have to speak up here. Um, German watches can be damn ugly. 
really, really ugly. I mean, of course, there are beautiful watches made in Germany, but the number of extremely ugly watches is so extremely high that I sometimes ask myself, who's the designer here? I mean, the, sh the, 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 the brand owner or the son of the brand owner? And sometimes I think it's exactly that. They just, they just don't hire professional product designers. And then you have watches and you see the specifications are great, but they look like shit. And then you have to ask yourself, what's going wrong here? And my theory what's going wrong is con number three. They focus too much on a small segment of people, um, like, like men between 30 and 60. And you can find big brands from Germany and you go to their shops and you cook, look where, where's the ladies section. An absence, not existing. Nobody there thinks it's a valuable um, step to produce watches for women. And of course this is a problem. I mean, imagine a public room only for men. We all know how it looks like. And then you imagine a public room for both sexes and it looks way better, often, mostly. And so if you focus only on a small segment of people, there is this nerdy smell around your brand, nerdy, nerdy, nerdy um, yeah, flair around your brand. And then you produce watches which are extremely ugly and nobody speaks up. Everybody says, oh yeah, that's nice, that's a watch for me. And then his wife says, this looks... Uh, absolutely ridiculous that thing okay those were my three pros and cons for every country but let me allow me an addition here um, there's an overall problem if you favor a region a single region nowadays because if you see the situation let's say prior to World War II there you had regions like Switzerland like Glas Hütte where and um, the people were um, exclusively capable to produce those timepieces because of the knowledge, because of the machinery and no, but nobody else could do it really. And so the region there was the promise for quality, for actual quality, for technical specifications. But nowadays if you are a little dictator and you have the, this nice country there you can, you can make it a, a, a federal goal to be a player in watchmaking. The knowledge nowadays is accessible accessible as a word, I'm not sure. And so if you compare today, let's say a high quality movement from Japan, Seiko, Grand Seiko, and you compare it uh, with a high, high quality movement from Switzerland, then it can be that the Japanese thing is just better. Second problem, made in Germany or Swiss made doesn't mean 100% Swiss made or made in Germany because there are terms and regulations and laws and the industries in those countries here are in constant movement to lower the bar so that you can produce 50% of the watch in China or 60% and only the rest in Germany and in Switzerland and it still is Swiss made or made in Germany. And I've made a video where I demonstrated with clever bookkeeping you can lower this even more and then you have technically a Chinese watch with the label Swiss made or made in Germany for a very high price and so keep this in mind please. And so for me personally the region is not so important, not so important anymore. I want the actual watch, I want features, I want something which are which is pleasant to look at, which is uh, at a good standard and when I have an equal, equal watch from China or Switzerland I would buy the Swiss thing of course. <laughs> Okay, those were my three pro and cons for every country. If you have an addition, then don't hesitate, just put it in the comments. And please don't forget the Q&A video, the upcoming Q&A video, just put your questions in, in this comment section here as well. And you can ask about yeah, watches or what we are doing here in, during the lockdown. I'm in week four now, look like shit, absolutely pale because we're inside all the time, home office. But there's some distraction, of course, Keywords on Netflix, um, computer games, and I still, I'm still trying to become a better illustrator. I've announced this, and I try to make um, illustration. This is the first try, the first draft for the perfect Ushanka, the perfect Russian Ushanka, and I want to ink this properly and to color it. And inking this type of illustration is extremely challenging, extremely difficult. But yeah, we have the time right now and so I think I will carry on. So if you're interested then please follow me on Instagram, caseback underscore Tim. I think I will show those illustrations more on Instagram than on YouTube. I think the better platform for this. Okay, and now stay healthy. Thank you very much for your attention and maybe until next time.